Thanks for tuning in to the Road Stories podcast, everybody leaving the studio. Thanks for sticking around. I appreciate it. Uh, we'll see you guys at the other show. Bye. Bye. Podcast who went five minutes after their time and started this late. That was sports with balls, right? Without balls? Without balls. Without balls. Without balls. Bye, uh, Aaron. Okay. She didn't say goodbye either. Is it okay. starting off weird? It seems like it's starting off a little weird. It's a little weird. It's a little aggressive. But it is a little aggressive. Right. We're late. I Last ate, day of the festival. I ate too much. That's Punch. why I'm aggressive. I haven't eaten anything. That's why so you're so passive. We need to meet in the middle. Okay. We'll meet in the middle. This is, we're live Can you at baby the bird me, maybe? Can I what? Baby bird? <laughs> I, th I thought you said baby Bert me. Uh, no. I was like, when do I take off my shirt? <laughs> uh, that's a Burt Kreischer joke, everybody. Yeah. All right. I'm going to put on my cans because I can't hear you. Uh, this, we're coming to you live from the All Things Comedy Festival. All Things Comedy Comedy Festival brought to you by uh, Bud Light, Cityscape of Phoenix, and Tito's Homemade Vodka. Remember there was a day when we never heard of Tito's and then the next day Tito's was fucking everywhere, right? There, uh, first, yeah. there, was, there was like no Tito's, there was no mesothelioma commercials. And but we're super happy that they're here now. I'm just saying. Like, not, not mesothelioma. But well, you're happy the mesothelioma is No, here? no, 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 not that. All right. I'm just saying Tito's, mesothelioma, and Joe Bonamassa all came around the same day in like yeah, 2011, that's true. 2010, yeah. 2011, before Joe Bonamassa and after Joe Bonamassa. That's how I live my life. Yep. But we're super glad for Tito's Yes. and Joe Bonamassa can suck it, unless yep. he's playing at Copper Blues later. No. Do you know who Joe Bonamassa is? No. Not. Isn't he British? Not with that name. Oh, oh, good. I'm glad you have me on. I'm glad I'm having you on the show. <laughs> <laughs> but the real sponsor <laughs> is Alexander Murray and Company's 19-year-old Scotch, brought to you by the man from the Mile High Show, Mr. <laughs> Matt Santos. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, free plug, Absolutely. Thank you uh, for bringing me this bottle of Scotch. My listeners know me very well. I call it Frank. <laughs> That's my son's name. That's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 I'm so bummed that was not on mic. That was great. <laughs> but we're having a great time at the festival. Yeah, Aaron? Absolutely. Absolutely. We uh, stand up podcasts, uh, food, drinks, the whole nine yards. Let's just get it rolling with my guests today. Um, a gentleman I worked with for the first time last night on two shows. Was it both shows? One show? You just did one show? It felt like it was two. <laughs> uh, all the way from across the pond in West Hollywood. Isn't that where you live, West Hollywood? East. East Hollywood. Which one? Chris Martin, right here, sir. A key. Oh, hello. How you doing, Chris? Thanks hey, for coming on the show, thank man. Thank you. Thanks for coming on the show. Are you a scotch drinker? Um, yeah, I like not as much as I uh, like Tito's, but um, <laughs> Tito's is my favorite. Again, I'd never heard of the, I never heard the word Tito's till I moved to America, and it's like it's all you hear in yeah. every bar. You've got to have Tito's. Um, I had some tea. Uh, it's just vodka. Right. I can't. I ne don't think I've ever got to a level with with a drink where I, when it's a when it's a drink that's really like basically disgusting to drink on its own. Right. I'm never like this is a great one. I mean, I. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm never like, this is great vodka. I'm like, which one is the least disgusting? Oh, I see what you're Tito's saying. Tito's is like, not the it's not the worst one I've ever had. Right. But I wouldn't be able to be like, this is, this is well-made vodka. I don't know. It's our sponsor. Um, yeah, but that's, that's a compliment from a British guy. Oh, that's okay, about as enthusiastic <laughs> as we get. We're like, it's not dog shit, so <laughs> it's good. Um, and when it comes to scotch, I think mm -hmm. I was telling you this earlier, like on my wedding, um, my wife's Scottish. Oh, I didn't know that. Half Scottish, half Filipino. So oh, that's uh, an interesting combo. It's just funny when she talks. I still find it amusing seeing Scottish words come out of her Asian face. But um, <laughs> the uh, the day like the day before I was in Scotland and I um I was wearing it. I just I surprised her by wearing a kilt. She said she wanted to marry a guy in a kilt, and I really didn't want to because I've got very small legs mm -hmm. for a. I was going to say for a grown up for a child. I'd okay. say small as well. But um, I went to the bottle shop uh, and I said. Can I have some, uh, I don't know why I thought I'm going to have for my groomsmen, I'll, we'll drink whiskey. Sure. He, went, he goes like, do you like it peated? Do you like it peated? Do you like it smooth? And I just said, just give me the one that's going to least make me go, that tastes really strong and of, of whiskey. But he gave me this one called Bel Belveni. Uh, 12, Belveni, Belveni, sure. Belveni, 12 years. And it was, it was, it was one more you drink and going, this is, 
again not horrible right <laughs> not horrible that's my barometer and I, I quite liked it so I mean I'm and I then off the back of it I think I started like I don't know why I started getting buying a bit of whiskey uh -huh. and scotch and then um I'd come back from a gig when Hannah was asleep and I'd drink it in front of the TV to mm. feel like I'm a, a much more professional person than right. I actually am but I don't what I've worked out with it is I, I think one's all right if I have two I go absolutely bananas like it, it's like a, it is like a drug right right oh yeah here's the deal I I, I love scotch and I, I can drink beer. I know where I'm at the whole time. Yeah. I can drink vodka. I know where I'm at the whole time. Yeah. Scotch, as much as I've enjoyed scotch, it's one glass can be too many or three glasses can be too many. There's never, it's it's one of those where you're like, okay, I'm done tonight. But it's like the percentage, right? That's what confuses me. Cause like 40%. So like, is vodka like 40% as well? I don't know. Anybody? It's not dissimilar. Yeah, so it's proof, the same, 40%. right? But I've had like, and it can't be just like have like I could have like five vodka sodas and be pretty okay, but I think if I had five, that's a, that's a Brit talking. <laughs> is that that's not loads, is it? Although, no, although Joe, it is. It's Amer Amer you guys free poor in America. Uh -huh. So I, on my birthday, to be fair, I was having vodka sodas and then I vomited heavily, oh. like um, in LA, um, because I forgot you guys free poor. Whereas we have to give set measures. Oh, otherwise, yeah. we'll go. We'll get too overexcited <laughs> in the UK. But um, with whiskey, I don't know what it is. It's like this extra thing in it. It's um, it just sends you. This one smells like it's not. It's quite nice, actually. It's 19 years old. So cheers. Hello. Yeah. I, I I I had a. That's really nice. That is nice. That isn't is. It? Um. Again, it does. It doesn't taste. It's quite smooth. <laughs> okay. No, it doesn't taste like horrifically <laughs> aggressive like right. some of these things can taste. Like I'm pretty sure I don't. That's really good. Yeah. That's up there with Belvenny. No, oh, much better in Belvenny. That's well, but this, so this so this is this is um, this is like worth a lot more. As in, like, as in, you get what you pay for. Like this taste. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. It tastes fucking good. Actually. I would. I remember when I, you know, my it's listeners dangerous. know I had braces, and the, when I got braces on, I, I was at the Palm Beach, Palm no, Palm Springs Improv. I'm pointing at Graham, who's coming on the show in a second. I don't know why I'm making him sit over there for all this. <laughs> he loves Palm Springs. Uh, Paul, it was a Palm Springs Improv, and uh, I ordered a scotch, and uh, the the guy, the bartender, the Palm, you only work it once a year. And the bartender's like, oh, you got braces on last year it, it, since I last saw you. I'm like, yeah. He's like, does the does scotch bother you when you with your with your braces? I'm like, no. Why would it do that? And I took a sip of scotch and found all the cuts in my mouth. Oh, really? And I was like, oh, yes. So how does it burn? How, has it, is it, is it used to it now? You're, you're, oh, yeah. Now, my, you know, it's when you first get the braces, they nick up your the insides of your They don't tell you that. Stuff. The orthodontist. No, they didn't do tell they, you that at all. Like, it will affect your whiskey drinking for the first <laughs> month. I guess you've got other things to think about, but this is this is really tasty. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm sorry our next guest won't be able to enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> you guy, This guy doesn't need any introduction. It's my good friend, Graham Elwood. Come on, Come on everybody. Thank you. Uh, I think I said right here. Graham, uh, do you know uh, Chris? We Chris met Graham? at this festival. We met at this All festival. Right. Yeah. So presumably you're teetotal rather than you hate whiskey. <laughs> you weren't just like, if it's Tito's, I'm having it. But No, yeah, I used to drink. I used to love scotch. Mm -hmm. I used to love my uh, my dad actually turned me on to nice single malt scotch. And then I went to a scotch tasting in Chicago that was sponsored by Johnny Walker. So I found out the history of how scotch is made. Okay. And the single that the, the sherry wood casks mm -hmm. and the whole thing and i was like i really i really love i was actually just sitting back there going oh yeah i don't miss drinking i don't miss hangovers i don't miss the trouble right. i got into but man scotch there's something about scotch right something about uh, do you know what it is it's that poetic thing where you, you like the history of it and you feel like i'm like a i'm an intellectual piss head but you're still right. are getting <laughs> still, still getting the same end goal it's the same as like um if you don't we, name your next album intellectual piss intellectual head, piss head, I'm gonna head be is a really great name upset. for an album but we um for my mate stag do or bachelor party as you call it we did this whole whiskey tour but, and you kind of go around and the person's telling you about the malt and all that and you're kind of going mm. but all you're thinking is can we just can we just can we just eat just drink the whiskey now that's all you're thinking at the end of but you do feel like i've earned i've earned drinking like six it's, shots of I, I would like do it like you could just have a glass and just sort of nurse it yeah absolutely. i used to do that and smoke cigars yeah I like I just like like coming home after a, a gig at like you know one o'clock in the morning and just just to wind down yeah you know and just plop in front of the couch, catch whatever TiVo you are and just wind down. I'm a big fan of that. Yeah, absolutely. It's weird to go to bed straight after a gig, I, even if it's been far away. I always say I'd try and even though you go, I should go to bed now. It's something about it. You feel like otherwise I've just gone straight to sleep after. Well, I can't. The adrenaline kind of keeps me up a lot of times. Yeah, yeah, after yeah. After you get home, and yeah. you just are just like. You can't shut it down. Enough. You can't yeah. shut your brain down, no matter what. Yeah, that and poker. 
I can't go to sleep after I play poker. Ah, that keeps you, my brain going. Are you good at poker? I used to be a. Re I used to. I used to kind of supplement my income for a little while, playing poker. Um, Did you? But hang on, because um, I was speaking to someone about it the other day. Because obviously, I used to do it when I was like eighteen in the UK. But then it suddenly, you know, it was a big boot. It was on TV. Loads sure. Yeah. But then, did you do it for, in California when it was still legal, and then you had to stop? when it became illegal to online or? No, I still, there are some online sites you can get on to. That are, I love that are, it. Yeah, um, yeah, but I started before the boom, like a year, started, because I, I think Jimmy Schubert, comedian Jimmy Schubert told me, if you're gonna work Vegas, don't gamble, because you're gonna blow all your money, learn to play poker. Because, yeah, because you can sit there and gamble for hours and yeah. lose 50 bucks. Yeah, and there's no house advantage or anything like yeah, that. So that's yeah. when I started, that's when I started playing, and then right. I started, but then I stopped, because I just don't, I got invited to Kevin Pollock's game a few times, and that's just a big money game. And if I'm not on my game, I don't want to go. That's awkward. You know what I mean? I don't want to go. You got to know what you're doing in those big games. Yeah, yeah, because it's like it's him. It's uh, who's the guy who's Hank Azaria? Hank Azaria is in that game. The creator of The Simpsons. What's his yeah. name? Apu. Oh. Apu is in the game. Apu, does he Apu it up? Do you reckon he goes? Oh, that's it. He's bluffing. He's bluffing. Yeah. He's gone. He's gone full of poo. Every <laughs> every once in a while. He'll Hank will bust into a Simpsons character just really? On really? just on the side. Just like, I you know, not it. like guys I'm gonna do you know, every once he'll just bust into something. You, I love it when um, my mate uh, Benny Boot, who's a really funny Australian comedian, who's sort of retired to become a professional monk, but that's like a whole different story. But he mm. um he was supporting Michael Winslow, you know, of oh, sure. Police Academy. Absolutely. He's a really nice guy. Mm -hmm. But he um it's that really funny thing of like impre impression and I know Hank's always not an impressionist, right. but he has a lot in his artillery, but he uh I guess it's like when comedian you uh, like an audience member would tell us a joke you go, I don't want to tell you a joke he'd be hanging out with Michael Winslow he's a really nice guy and he'd be like uh, Michael Winslow just does loads of like noise like always does noises and oh, really? noises all the time like Tourette's almost and then one time they were like he was just like they were sitting around him and another comment like can you do your transformer and he just looked at them like like, like, fuck you! I'm not. Hey, he was like upset, like he just. And then, but then, like five seconds later, he was just doing a, like a dog noise, like. But, right. but he just doesn't do requests. He's like, right. a, he's yeah, like right. a really like um like a valued DJ. He's like, no, I don't do requests, guys. Yeah. I'll, I'll do whatever noises I want to do. I'm a not professional. To, I'm okay. not doing transformers, but I'll do a guy walking in snow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I gotta, I gotta talk about this because. Uh, this is a great festival. The All Things Comedy Festival is fantastic. I've had such a blast. So much fun. The shows have been incredible. Except oh. the second show last night at Tempe. Oh, what happened? Oh, well, I did the first show, which was awesome. First show was fantastic. Packed, people Packed, in the balcony. Everybody. It was great. The first show was great. Second show, just almost as packed. A little Real quick, Jamie Flam just walked oh, in. Oh, Jamie Flam, ladies and gentlemen. Jamie Flam. Hello. Jamie Flam with his new endeavor. What's it called? Dynasty Typewriter. Dynasty Typewriter. Theater in... Uh, Westlake, between Koreatown and downtown. Awesome. No, they can't. <laughs> but we're you gonna have a get... Kickstarter. Yeah. What is it? Uh, go to DynastyTypewriter.com. Dynasty Dynasty uh huh. Support, support Murray and, and Chris. Chris, we've, email, we've emailed Graham. Chris Martin, but we never met. Oh, yeah. Hey, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we're gonna have Jamie Flam on soon to talk about the uh, the new theater and the projects and everything. And we know Jamie from uh, the Flam Jam, uh, great Long show. Shot podcast. Long Shot Podcast, uh, Podcast, Pod yeah, Los Angeles Podcast. Pod Fest. Excellent, excellent. We were talking. We were just about to talk about this. Uh, they put this up, this extra show because you. Do you think it was? I, I only did have that as a frame of reference. I thought it was quite fun, but you did get. You were unlucky in terms of there was a guy who was a bit of right. Well, shit the first show, the first show was amazing. It was great. It was and a great crowd. It was packed energy, and it was just like every comic just crushed. Yeah. Because sometimes you look at a lineup and you're like, man, nine acts. We're all doing like eight to ten minute sets right. or something. Like it was tight, and you're wondering like, oof. Crowd was like down with what everybody was Absolutely. doing. They didn't care about the quick gear shift of different acts. Sure, you know? sure. And so it was like, man, that was great. Everyone was like, that was the coolest thing ever. And then I left to come hang out over here at Stand Up Live, and mm -hmm. then you did the I did show. the second show, okay. the 10 o'clock show, where I met Chris Martin, yeah. who you went on before me? Or went I on think that? I went on just after just you. Just after, oh yeah, Sean Rouse so you went sort on of, before me. Yeah, you, you took a bullet and like, <laughs> no, but it was, but this is, okay, tell right, me, what so, you, tell so me so your perception, all, I'll tell you what right. my the perception was. you up was. fairly early, were No, we? I was like, first of all, there were like 12 comics on each show, not nine, so I must have been like seven. Yeah, yeah, And yeah, all quality acts, all quality show. It wasn't like this was a sketchy show or anything like that. 
Every you know the audience was having a good time. Everybody's having a good. They're a little tighter than the first one, but the first one I felt was above average audience. Yeah, this is an average. You know, this is a pr typical fine, excellent crowd. Everybody had a good time. I go up there. I do one joke about being a stay-at-home dad. Some guy finds it offensive in the audience, and I and I couldn't understand what he was saying. Yeah. And it caused a big disruption at his table to where I had to go. What happened over here? Did I just cause a divorce in your? What's going on? And then he started yelling at, like started yelling out at me to where I just, I made that click in my brain where I'm like, for the next seven minutes, I have to destroy this guy because he wasn't shutting up. Yeah. And it, and that's what I, that's what I, and I didn't do it like, fuck, you know, I did it hopefully very clever. I think that I think the audience right. really enjoyed it, but it was like just out of the blue. Like, yeah. no, and then he got booted him and his whole table booted. So basically I did six minutes and had seven people booted in those nice. six minutes. <laughs> but you did it, but it was like, uh, from my perception, it was like, there was nothing you did. You like, he was just drunk, shouted something. And it was annoying. You know when someone's shouting, you can't hear what they're saying. So right. it was like, then he kept doing it. But then you just, yeah, you, like you said, you never were like overly aggressive. You were like yeah. fun with it. And you weren't like getting kicked out, but he was just being an art. And so, and right. it was like fun. Cause it was like also, you know, I thought it energized the crowd again because it was like that point in the show, something different's happening, right? Yeah, Otherwise yeah. this guy's going up doing their bit. Something different happened, you dealt with it nicely. And then like you said, you just went with the flow. Yeah, and I always try to, whenever I hit a, have to attack a heckler, I always try to diffuse it by like, and I did this last night, I walked over to the other end of the stage. He was on stage left and I walked over to the other end of the right. And I go, I go, I know you guys are having a good time, but this guy's gonna kick my ass in the parking lot later. You know, right, just kind of right, right. give him a little like, yeah, maybe I will, you know, just kind of give him sure. a little bit. And then I proceeded to shit on him again. But it was, and but it was fun. It was like, but you, I know you probably, cause you like, oh, it's annoying when, but maybe it's like a UK thing. like. That happens sometimes. Like if you did two shows, it's kind of like you got to do something different in the second show and you did it good. So that's why I thought it wasn't. Yeah, I, it, it was weird. It's like I had a really good time slamming on the guy. Sometimes, <laughs> like, man, sometimes that's a golden dude. thing. Sometimes I'm like annoyed or I'm like, just fucking be quiet. Yeah. But other times I'm I'm like, that was actually, that was fun because I, I did this show in Tokyo um, a year ago and it was at this, this like pub. You know, there's no full-time comedy clubs mm -hmm. that I know of in Tokyo. So it's at this like pub uh, and it's a British pub, but I, the guy was a, was a British, was he an American that had a British pub? Anyway, so it's a place where expats go. Right. And he like, hey, let's screen earbuds and then do the show. So I'm, and they, they put up local acts in front of me and then I went up there and I was doing 45, 50 minutes or whatever. And there was a guy from some, I can't remember where he was from, like Holland or something, but he kept yelling out. <laughs> And I slammed him mm -hmm. and then he wouldn't let go. And so I'm doing a headline set. And after a while it got fucking, I was annoyed and I crushed him and I, and I, everyone thought it was funny. And I remember my uh, girlfriend at the time was with me. She's like, that was awesome. And I go, do you think that was fun for me? It kind of wasn't like right, it, it yeah. became unfun after a while. Sure. When someone's a jackass and you just hammer them. Great. In right. a, in a seven, eight minute set or whatever. Fine. But like after a while I was just like, man, I've already crushed you 10 times. Yeah. yeah. Why, why are you? That's when they have to get kicked out. I yeah. Like yeah. It's, it's, it's like, yeah, you, you get to that point. You're like, yeah, seven minutes is kind of a fun, different thing. But yeah, for you, cause then you can't even, you go into a bit, you go, is this prick going to shout? Right. When there's a uh, tension, like, you know, timing. And so that's when I'm with you. That's annoying. 45. Right. But I had a, I had a group of, and I'm pointing at you, even though you're not Australian, but you have an accent. Uh, <laughs> well, they, the Australians were originally British. Oh, I, yeah. So they stole some bread, apparently, or something. <laughs> well, was that what they got them uh, well, locked I don't, up I don't, on I don't, the You'd island? have to Wikipedia the real thing All here. Right. But I think they, you know, they were convicts for bread. Or sure. Something. Anyway, my country, again, being evil bastards, but with a bit of charm behind it, so we get away with it. <laughs> so no one really hammers us for it. Anyway, sorry, carry on. <laughs> but they were, they were they're, you know, typical Austro you know, drinking and boozing, and they came at me, and the more I came at them, the more they loved it. Oh, yeah. So the more I slammed and they're like, oi, oi, oi. And then they would come at me again. And I was having a good time. But then I noticed the audience was kind of like, mm, you know what? We didn't come here to yeah. see this. So I had to switch gears to shut them up. And they wouldn't shut up. And then I said, I, 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 I leaned over to one of the audience members. And I said, you know what? They're just convicts from the UK. They don't know how to deal with it. And then they like yelled out again. And I said, uh, you guys already got kicked out of England. So if you don't be quiet, you're going to oh, get kicked out of a, nice. you're gonna get nice kicked out of a comedy a club. <laughs> that, would, that would just roof it. Yeah. And I just left. That's great. That's, <laughs> but that's like an Australian. I was saying this to someone I just had dinner with. I was like heckling in the UK and Australia. Look, it's like, it's just like, it's sort of seen as banter. Yeah. Like over here, I don't know if someone shouts out. It's like, 
you can go fuck you and then the crowd go yes fuck that person but in the UK and a bit Australia it's like if someone comes at you they come at you like over five times I think then the crowd are like but if they come at you once or twice they're just like Right. How's this guy dealing with? And I bet those guys afterwards have been like, "Yeah, mate, I was helping you out." Was right, right, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was exactly. helping you out, mate. Yeah, you were right, like, mate. Jesus. I have another Foster's. I am. I here's something I want to know about over here, which I haven't done yet. Um, like in the UK, I did a, a black circuit. Do you have you done black circuit gigs over here? What are black circuit or gigs? Urban, 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 urban rooms. Like you call them black oh. circuit. Like I call it. It's like a black circuit in London. Oh, we call like it. basically a black crowd. Yeah, yeah, no. But do you we, call? Do you call it? What do we call it? Uh, black rooms black, black rooms, rooms right, we call yeah. it mixed nuts on pico <laughs> <laughs> josh wolf everybody josh hey. wolf josh wolf. i'll see you at the punchline next week yeah. that's right. Two weeks, right uh oh yeah i go next week but i'll see you in two weeks <laughs> yeah, good to see you man. josh wolf thanks for stopping Same by travels josh yeah, okay. nice to see you um, uh yeah, they call them urban rooms to not sound racist yeah but it's not racist to say black no 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 anyway not, not in a room full of white people what's up yeah, right? yeah come yeah, on yeah. you just walked into the racist podcast how you doing everybody <laughs> yeah <laughs> good timing guys but i did this black circuit gig in london and i'd done like two or three and i'd gone like really well i'd been like i was kind of newer but i was like the, the white guy and just playing up to it and i did this one show and these guys were like can you go on at the end and i had another show in london so i'll like, oh, go I'll go at the end. They gave me a hundred, it was like a hundred pounds. They gave it to me in my hand before I, as I walked in the building. And in hindsight, I should have just U turned and left because it was Sunday night, 400 people in this uh, club, which I've heard from other acts and black acts telling me, like, that's not a good gig. It's like Sunday and the crowd are quite young and they don't drink. And it's just kind of weird. There was this black act on who I've never seen do anything but destroy every gig, but he was like struggling. Mm -hmm. This is weird. And then I bumped into a guy I really used to play sport with like 20, uh, 10 years earlier who was uh, doing like a rap, rapping for two songs. Okay. And uh, they were kind of all right with that. And then when at the end, I discovered, do my stand up and the, the crowd are not laughing at any of my jokes. And then um, someone heckled. And what I noticed about this gig is, uh, this girl was like heckling and the guy on stage wasn't being like funny with it. He was just being so mean, but the crowd were like loving it. They were like loving just like <laughs> being, not even like witty, just like, fuck you bitch. And the right. crowd like, ah. Oh. Anyway, so this woman like pipes up to me and she had like a little pointy hooded thing on. Um, and I said the first thing I my head was like, oh, you, you look like an African druid. Cause right. she looked like a druid. And, and I think they have this weird thing in those, in those gigs where like Caribbean shit on Africans and they love it. Oh, okay. And so I said African druid and the crowd like, it was like a round of applause. And I was like, this is, I mean, in my head I was going, like the closer to racism I get here, the, the <laughs> potentially the more laughs I'm going to get. But then it's like a, like a slippery slope. Like <laughs> I'd rather almost die. And, I saw, and then I said something, I had this joke about the reference African again, got a massive laugh. And um, I was like, shit, I need to. But then I was like, I'm going to play it safe and not just be offended. <laughs> like I don't have any racist material anyway. <laughs> so then ended up going, I'll go back to my normal shtick. I wish I just, if I just caned this woman for 10 minutes, it would have been like, yeah, mm, yeah, yeah, carried yeah. out on the shoulders. And I got to the end of my set for the next five minutes, just doing gear to nothing, to silence. <laughs> I did my last joke, uh, which had this stupid punchline. It was about, if ever someone breaks into my house, I'm gonna, I've already planned in my head what I'd use as a weapon. I'd smash a clock on their head and say like, don't be alarmed. Like yeah. It was like a silly, which would normally work and I did it to like 400 people absolute silence and then one guy at the back of the room just shouted punchline <laughs> wow. and then I just walked off to silence uh. walked off to silence I heard I've, I've never I had a chance to perform in England uh, earlier this year but I wasn't able to I was over there my wife was over there for the BAFTAs yeah. and so it wasn't like hey enjoy your BAFTAs I'm gonna go do the I'm comedy go do store yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah. but I hear like the heckling over there is can, is almost like a sport yeah, it's, I think it's that, yeah, people, whenever you'd like do interviews over there, be like, oh, how do you, do you worry about heckles or deal with heckles? And you just kind of get, it's just like anything. I think you get more confident you're up there. It's the same thing. Someone shouts, mm -hmm. you just roll with it. But yeah, like late night gigs, packed room, you're always going to get, it's like, I guess it's more like joining in people. Okay. Often they think they're helping and you know, it's often not, but right. it's, it's rarely with malice. Like, oh, sure. No one ever. I think they think it's a. It's just like it's. It's just banter. Like yeah. you know what I mean. For and those so, of for the audience in uh, live here, uh, a heckle isn't always you suck. As a matter of fact, it's rarely a you suck. Yeah. It's usually something trying to be helpful or something to encourage. They're adding on to the. They're adding on to. They think yeah, that's what a heckle is. Yeah. My it, favorite one that I hear more and more so now. It's not even a heckle. It just happens in like clubs where you hear like you'll say a line, and then um, 
someone will like there'll be laughter and someone will just out loud like repeat your punchline to their friends like yeah. really yeah. loudly yeah. they're just trying to take credit for it like, oh yeah yeah biscuits and you're like but like, so loud that it's in the room and I'm like I don't know that's 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 what I don't 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 try and get a laugh <laughs> yeah. from your friends by saying it back but yeah you're right it's it's really people always go like what's the worst heckle thinking weirdly one that's all like which ones can't you deal with if someone literally just shouted like you're shit at comedy that would actually be quite hard to, but no one ever shouts that really. right right that'd have be you, so hard to deal have with have you ever I got a it was either a you suck or you're not funny once really and he wasn't wrong <laughs> I was I was tanking I was not oh, really? funny but that's the only time have you ever gotten well that I've ever gotten just flat out used like it's always just been some like some yeah. trying to be trying to add in yeah or some like, yeah, it's mm. usually that. It's usually somebody trying to participate that's just yells out something that's just fucking clunky and stuff. Right. One time, one time I was in the, the comedy cafe in Milwaukee, like back in the nineties. And there was this guy and he was at a table and it could tell he was, he's the funny guy at whatever dumb job he's got. Right, yeah, you know absolutely. what I mean? So he thinks hey, I could do that. He's got that mentality. He's wrong. <laughs> um, uh, and he said something like well, your sister and his table laughed, but mm -hmm. nobody else did. And I said, well, um, I said something like, well, that's too bad for you. Cause my sister's got the clap and the fucking cloud b blew up. And then I started slamming him more and he was just sitting there like, oh, wide eyed. And I fucking <laughs> kept every, but that was the closest I can't ever. Yeah. I've never had a flat out. Like you right. say, I don't it, think that's, that's not, it's rare that it's just, you suck. It's usually no, like, it's not malicious. is like what you said. Yeah. Yeah. It's I remember more, one of the most frustrating heckles and it wasn't me who got it. It was the guy behind me. And this was this, how he, the one guy used to respond to respond to all his jokes. <laughs> That'll work wow. after every, uh, <laughs> that'll work oh, yeah. after, and you can just see the guy just, the I forget who the comic was, just losing his pacing, yeah. but he's being supportive. He was yeah, being like, that's how it's I hard enjoy. To, it's hard to slam someone who's not being mean. They're yeah. Like, they're just having a good time in a fucking bizarre way. Yeah, someone goes, ah, <laughs> funny. You're like, you're just, the laughter implies that. You right, don't have right. to say the word funny out loud. <laughs> what was it? Um, I, I find that my favorite ones are when it's, it's not even a heckle. It's someone's just so honest about how they feel about something. Like I remember seeing this guy at this show. I won't name, he's a British comic, but he was trying some new stuff. And it was like, they were like groany jokes. Like, he sort of combo, but then he had like jokes. And if you do jokes, it's great. But if you're just like a chatty comic and you go, here's some jokes, which feels fucking cheesy. Right. He did one, it was like, ugh. That one, ugh. And he did the third one, and it's, it was like, no one laughed. And one woman went, seriously? <laughs> <laughs> seriously? <laughs> <laughs> you thought that was funny? You thought that was worthy of saying out loud? <laughs> oh. Do you know what, though, when you said you went in Japan, that really reminded me. I feel like expat audiences are one of the most can be the most frustrating crowds because you they almost i find ex expats kind of odd anyway in in terms of they've i feel like have you murdered someone is that why you moved here I right. you're, you're on the run you're why running you from here? something yeah. why what could you not make it in your own country so you've always got they always like convince you like it's great like you know my girlfriend's 30 years younger than me it's like all right mate yeah. anyway but you always go and it's always it's like thailand there. yeah well there's a lot of, but there's just a lot of that and it's always like their arena but i am um, i did some i did a show in um Bali in Indonesia, like it was, they'd had a bombing there in like, Bali. Yeah. Okay. B A L I. Oh, we know Bali. Yeah. We're Have surfers. You? Oh, you're surfers. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I was over there. One of us is. <laughs> Who's the better one? Where did that come from? Where did that come from? We're both surfers. Cool. Then one of us is. Where did that come from? That's just that's just American one up and shit. You can't help it. Um, I'm insecure. Yeah. <laughs> Or as you guys would say, Murray's just being a cunt. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, like, I prefer insecure. I'm not going to lie to you. I prefer insecure. Look who's one up in me now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but well, yeah, so it was in, it was in Bali, and um, it was the first show they'd done there in like seven years. There had been some bombings there. Like, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, it was in this restaurant, and the guys running it, really nice guys. They run another show in Jakarta, which is great, but it was the first one they'd done in this island. And I was there with, do you know Ted Alexandro, New York comic? Oh, yeah, uh, Ted Alejandro. I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know him personally, but I know he's, he, he, he was opens, just, well, he just he opens opened. for Louis C.K. quite a lot. Yeah. He's great. Somebody, he he's just, fucking And Gaffigan. Awesome. Yeah. And Gaffigan. So he, he yeah, works yeah. pretty, he's so funny. And right. he's like, um, he, he's been on like, you know, Letterman and all that stuff. And mm -hmm. he, I think he just done Letterman and he was over doing like a tour of Asia and he was headlining. I was opening and the two guys that run the gig normally are great, but then they had this third kind of point guy who was lived on Bali and had sorted this venue out. 
and him and his mates are on this table and they'd like obviously come they had that real alpha like we're like from the uk and it, i think they were scottish and they were just dicks right and this guy who'd, who'd they were there to watch their mate and they were there to just bait, not, not like be like good-hearted heckling just mean like i went on and they said some just arsey stuff and i think i managed to bat away as right and then um Ted was on and uh, they said, because he'd been interested, he's been on Letterman, they're like, uh, he's like being described as a new Seinfeld or something like that. Mm -hmm. Someone's like, Seinfeld's better, like really mean shit. And again, he dealt with it and then their mate was on, they only laughed at him and he did like literally verbatim stolen routines of other comics. Oh really? Proper verbatim, yeah. like word for word, like there's this great Australian comic called Steve Hughes, has this great routine about how being gay is more straight than being straight. It's an amazingly dumb routine, but you know, you just watch someone just doing it shit and he was, they were just doing it and he dropped, he said like racist words. Anyway, they were laughing at him, they were dicks. Anyway, my mate, Benny, who I'd mentioned earlier, Australian comic, he was gonna do the, the gig like a couple months later. And I said, the gig's cool, but just so you know, like just watch out the guy running it's odd. Uh, the guy who's got the venue and his mates are dicks, like hecklers. And then I emailed him like, I'd, like the next day after he'd done it, I go, how's the gig? And he goes, yeah, yeah, the gig was all right, but then um, you know that guy who you said his mate said, so, yeah, they just threw limes at me for my whole set. They threw limes. They threw limes, <laughs> the fruit limes at him on stage. He went, they threw limes at me. And I was like, this is, this is dog shit. And then they said, they started chatting to the bloke who was mates and the guy thinks that AIDS is a made up disease. Oh, uh, what, government. really? Yeah, because he had sex with a lot of prostitutes and in his head he thought that HIV was a made up disease. <laughs> he didn't think it was real. Also good guys. Yeah, yeah. good, good solid, guys. So guys. So how do we get booked on that? <laughs> yeah, I mean. Can you just go ahead and give us that information? You're on a you know, nice trip to Bali. But oh, yeah. geez. But that's oh. bizarre. That's, uh, that brings us to a question we ask on the show. What has been thrown at you on stage? I've had a shoe. A shoe? It was a shoe at a Christmas show. It wasn't at me. It was a on... Christmas shoe? No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. It was, a, it was an elf. An elf. It was shoe an elf throwing. No, the, it was. The I was buckle on, got you. I was on stage and yeah, an elf chucked a shoe at me. I was in Brighton on stage and some drunk. I've women. been to Brighton. You've been to Brighton? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's South England. Yeah, it's nice. It's the gay capital of uh, UK. That's why I was there. There we go. Nice. Nice. Yes. Heckled himself. Boom. There's nothing wrong with being gay, oh, so it's not a heckle. But anyway, um, <laughs> just to clarify that. Um, I got a shoe thrown at me by some women <laughs> on stage. I oh, think. women's shoes. But it wasn't like sexy. It was like, just like, they thought it was funny to throw a shoe. Right. When is being a shoe thrown at you sexy? Yeah, there's never a time where it's like, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Hold on, let me whack if, off. If she's only wearing a shoe and then that's the last item, then that's it. But she was wearing other clothes. Yeah, no, it, it wasn't. It definitely, it's never been sexy having a shoe thrown at you. No, I don't think so. Like that, how, how like inflated a perception was she's throwing a shoe at me? Oh, I yeah. must be in there. I am in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> in the she threw a punch. I, th I think I'm in there. I what I'm have, in. I've asked you this question, but you. I've only had one, like someone threw like a balled up napkin or something. Mm -hmm. And it was like fun. It was, the show was kind of getting rowdy and someone threw that. And when that happened, I just went, anyone throws something at me one more time, I will end this fucking show and I will come into the goddamn audience. I am not joking at all. And everyone got wide eyed. And I said, see, I'm not fucking around. I'm up here all alone. You throw something at me. My life feels threatened. I will come after you. And I took a, I go, everybody good? Then I went into my act. Graham has a, a weird gear Graham change. Graham has a rage. That's a weird gear change. <laughs> he has like this. It's true though. There's a, there's a, in a surfboard, there's a stringer. It's a piece of wood that goes right through the middle of the foam. Graham has a stringer rage. It's just like right in there. It doesn't come out often. If I feel threatened, I'm like, that's that. Yeah. If you, if there's like, I'll, ha ha, okay, that's cool. Like, but if you like, if there's some type of threat to me, then I'm just like, then I will change and go. I had a dude, I told this already story on the I show. Was the show I was thinking. The yeah, the show. Tahoe show where the guy was like, ooh, and he was saying stupid stuff. And then he looked like he was going to come up the stairs because there was a stair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, and then I was like, uh-uh. Because he was pacing around. I'm in Nevada. He probably owns a gun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was just like, nope. Cause then it's just like the reality of the situation is I'm on stage all alone with lights. Like I'm, it's me against 300 or whatever. And then I just change my physicality changes to where it's just like, just so you know, I will not go down without a fight. Right. I will land something on you. You might knock me out, but I'm good. And you just need to make that decision for yourself. <laughs> and then, <laughs> so I'm just, I just don't, I don't fuck around with that. I don't know Jeez. why. I just, uh, it's a To thing. the guy who just walked in, this is a comedy podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're in, you're in. It's my gladiators. We're talking about doing stand up and how violent it is. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You've never been, no one's, no, one's, no one's ever stormed the stage when you've been on. No. 
No, but this guy, this guy, the, the, the Tahoe story that I told, the guy was pacing around and I just stopped and went, because it was joking and I kept making fun of him. The audience couldn't tell. And I think some audience people do that. Is that guy a plant? No, no. he's a fucking psychopath, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. man. Like I was asking, I was literally going, is security in the room? I was saying this, where is the casino security? And the other comics uh, were just watching and then later we're like, man, that was nuts. And I said, did you go grab security when you were watching me? No, I didn't. I'm not naming names, but Andy Wood, <laughs> who I was giving guest spots to all week. And I go, motherfucker, get, get, get a brother's back. And right. he's like, oh, big, 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 big. <laughs> so, uh, cause that's the thing. And I think that's a, like a road comic thing. You know, you, you would bond with guys on the road, especially when you're doing, you're first starting out and you're doing one nighters and you are some, sometimes they're great, but sometimes it's you against that town. Sure. Yeah. And the minute you always had each other's back. So if a guy was on stage and that shit was going down, the other comic would go, Hey, you, this fucking, this guy, like you right. would jump and do it. You wouldn't just sit in the balcony and watch yeah. and go, that was amazing. Like, <laughs> Cause I was literally, and then I'm on stage cause then I'm jumpy. And in yeah. this fucking crazy country where everyone's shooting everybody, uh, I'm just like, I'm fucking like, yeah, what, what's going to happen? Yeah. I hear rustling to this, to, to my stage left where backstage is. And I'm just like, is this guy going to come fucking steamroll me? And I'm like, where's hotel security. Yeah. I was like, I feel, I was like, this is fucked up. So I just changed my physicality and my demeanor. And I said, sir. Cause I do like a joke in my act about being a yellow belt in karate. I said, that's a joke. I'm actually a black belt. If you come at me, I will take it as a threat. I suggest you leave. And the audience was like, there's just a, th there's just a yeah. thing that's happened to me twice where I've had to do that. And like suddenly put on like, that's good talk that I would be like, this guy knows if, if, if you say, if you come me, that's a, th if you just like put it in a category like that, I'm like this guy, Yeah. you know how to fight. Yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, that's what my martial arts instructors told me. If someone comes at you, tell them, you go, you just get, if a guy's acting this way, just this is how you diffuse it. You go, I don't want to fight you, but if you come at me, I will take it as a threat and I will defend myself like as it. such. And mm -hmm. then they just, well, okay. They thump their chest while they're backing out. And it's like, right. yeah, I just punked you, bitch. So in that same, the, that's a problem with uh, clubs and casinos because the casino security is in the casino. Yes. They're not in the club. Because no. I, I think it was the same club happened to me. Some, you know, uh, what's, what's that shitty t shirt company? addicted or whatever oh affliction affliction affliction, affliction. yeah affliction yeah guy. yeah an affliction guy okay, nobody has their shirts on okay good <laughs> okay, okay. I, 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 to to a brit explain it is this like a just a it's just crappy brand it's, it's like a, tap out shirts like I think, think mma of, think of somebody oh, right, i'm with you it's like hey i'm i'm hard because i'm wearing this yeah right, it's I love like and then they like kardashians and i'm with you you know stuff right santos you know what i'm saying like so he's and he's all it's like you know just like buffed out and yeah he's got his trophy wife on her arm and i said something like uh oh geez and she goes that's my line i'm like what Ugh. do i say oh geez i'm like bitch we all say oh geez <laughs> like why it's are not you? a catchphrase yeah it's not a you catchphrase invent, oh geez yeah so hey like you i wrote yeah. that <laughs> <laughs> hello that's mine as well <laughs> and then and so I go to defuse the situation. I'm like, oh man, good luck, you know, dealing with her or whatever. Ha ha ha. And then he's like, I'll mess you up like that. And so I go, hey, buddy, we're all, I'm kidding. We're all having a good time. He's in like second row. So I go to give him like a, like a kind of like a side five. Yeah. And he goes, he's like smiles and goes to give me the side five and then grabs my hand and yanks me almost off stage. Uh, and that was when I was like, security? Yeah. <laughs> at, least, at least he didn't leave you hanging. That would have been worse. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been worse. Just like, oh, oh man, that's the nightmare. You got that vibe swinging across this. That would have like, been oh, horrible. Oh, you'd have to walk off stage straight away. Yeah. Like, oh, the the night's hanging, over. Left me hanging in my affliction. <laughs> oh, I had a, what was the one I was thinking of? I'm trying to think if I've ever had that. Because obviously if you get attacked on stage, it's terrifying. But, you know, like Jim Jeffries, you know, that kind of did wonders for his career. You know, Jim, oh, really? So he, the thing, obviously. I don't he, know this. He's a great comic story, anyway, but, Jim yeah, Jeffries. Sure. And he, you know, he's always got great stuff. And especially over here, he's doing great. But it, the, the thing that kind of tipped him over in the UK. It's funny, you know, when because of that happened, you know, like Bill Burr got booed in Philadelphia and that was, he's a great comic anyway. And that's just that, sometimes you need an extra boost. Right, absolutely. Jim was on stage at the comedy store in Manchester and his agent, Brett Vincent, who uh, is a well-known uh, agent and great. And Shout out to couple, Brett. Brett's great. <laughs> but Brett, no, because what Brett did, Brett put this online and uh, I don't know if he did it tactically or whatever, but Jim was on stage in Manchester and this guy just mid-show came on and just got on stage and punched him in the face. Wow. Mid gig, and then Jim went off and then came back and tr carried on. The crowd were like right behind him, didn't have five minutes in rap. But that was like, that feels like that was one of the first, like, 
I don't know, maybe it was like 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So when YouTube was, so that was big and that just catapulted him because he's kind of edgy anyway. Sure. Right. Getting punched on stage is like validation. And that, that was like a nice little boost for his thing. But I'm just, just to confirm, I'm not saying because of that. Right, he's right. now famous. I think he's a great comic anyway, but that something like, imagine just getting punched in the face does wonders for your career. No one would have thought that like. Graham? God, it's Mate, like, if, if, if Andy shot, would have just videotaped it instead of just watched, yeah. then I would have been really happy. <laughs> if you've been shot, if you've been shot, in the, I mean, sh no one's been shot on stage. So if you could get oh, shot fuck, in the knee, don't kneecap. say that. Oh, I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Do, I, honestly, you know what I country don't. you're in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't touch, touch loads of wood right now. <laughs> I don't want to go down this path, but I think about that almost every time. I, go I don't like having my back to the window right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's very Italian of you. I like facing the exits. <laughs> but I think I think about it. Like think about that. I think about you know that could go down in a club any at any time. Yep. I think about that a lot, and it's kind of. I wasn't terrified about it until about. you guys said that. Well, it's because you're I'm, from England. If I get on, yeah, in England we don't have to. We'd worry if someone chuck a bit of bread at you or some <laughs> yeah. limes. That's the worst thing. <laughs> or a get shoe, your five a day. A woman yeah, shoe. A I had a woman. How pathetic is the UK? A shoe. It's like you might get shot here, but I might get hit by a stiletto. Hold on, not that I need to make it a little more pansy-ish. I had a woman uh, just like take the, you know, those awful uh, comedy club drinks with the whipped cream on them. Yeah, yeah. She like finger spooned it and flicked it at me oh. from the front row. And I didn't know it. And I was wearing a tie and it like <laughs> right on my tie. And I was going on. But you didn't it. notice. I didn't notice. Oh, that's the worst. I didn't notice. And I was going on. And I'm thinking I'm killing. Because, but everybody's laughing at the big spooge of whipped cream oh. on my tie. But then my buddy like came out and was like, Get her out of here. She threw something on stage. Oh, like, really? Yeah, he, he came out and it wasn't Andy Wood, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> we threw him under the bus. Um, Good. I had um, <laughs> I had one once where I was on stage and there was like a bachelor party and they're all in uh, jockey outfits. And uh, this is this maybe sums up the. Hold the, on a second. Do you call it jockey? Do you know what the word jockey means? Like, yeah, you like, know, like riding a horse. They're riding a horse, so they're all dressed as jockeys. Why were they dressed? Because it's like, do you not have that for bachelor parties here where everyone just dressed stupid? <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a lot of Americans laughing at me. No, by no, that, no. I buy that. Just, just to let you know. So this what, is why it makes we it left sound England. Like, it, makes it, yeah, no, it makes it sound like you always, it's not, people aren't always dressed as a jockey, but it's like, it's, it's fancy dress. So it's like, do you guys for bachelor parties do fancy dress or is that not a thing? Like people dress like a, they bet the uh, bachelor dress is like a massive baby. They put them in like a nappy and give them a dummy or like a man. You're maybe using words we don't understand. Fuck no, they, <laughs> yeah, the, the women, no, what are you talking these about? These guys so, are like, are you having a stroke? They'll so, wear like matching suits maybe. Oh, but they right. Won't. Okay. Then this is different. So Halloween. Oh, uh, we have penis straws. Yeah. So, oh, that's, that's funny. the girls. That's the girls. The I never even thought of that. That's so funny. So in the UK, like if you're like a low rent bachelor party, there'll be either matching t-shirts with the guys like with their nicknames on the back like shagger and like dude or whatever like oh, just wow. americanize that yeah, no guy, one has dude on their back arena, in the uk shagger shagger shagger's like how english shagger. is shagger compared to dude right so there's that level of it or there's um they'll dress you'll make the you'll dress the stag up looking like an arsehole so it'd be like uh most of my mates it was like you just go out and i said to my i don't for my one i don't want to be i don't want to dress up as like an prick i don't want to look like an idiot on my i don't mind having fun but i don't want to dress up as somebody put someone in like a diaper and mm -hmm. a dummy in their mouth or like a mankini do you ever see the film borat yeah, yeah so yeah, you know yeah. that green like there was a, after that film like every fucking stag do there was a guy in that outfit, oh really and it just looks so, and uh hindus do a similar they all dress sort of like did you say Hindus? So Hindus is a bachelorette party. So I fucking, this is going to be Wait, so well, English right now. I know. I'm gonna, I, I'm thing, gonna sing God, God save our gracious queen. The, in the only thing I understood. <laughs> the only thing I understood. I'm like, was I'm like, everything I'm trying to explain gets more and more English. I'm like, oh god. The only thing I understood was mankini. Mankini, right? <laughs> so well, a Hindu or a Hindu? Hen, uh, we call it. So we call it stag and Hindu is our bachelor and bachelorette party. It's called a stag, like a like a stag, like a deer yeah, and yeah. a hen. Like a, I don't know, chicken. like a duck like chicken. Oh, hen do d u or yeah, hen do, yeah d o d o oh, hen. Somebody hen do. just turned the lights out. Yeah. It's got sexy. So you see, somebody heard you talking shit about Hindus. Hen, yeah, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, they're like, yeah, we're not, we're not having any <laughs> yeah. of this. Yeah, everyone Click. has a re every every uh, woman getting married has a red dot on her forehead. That's, that's <laughs> what we do for our Hindus. No, um, yeah, 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 yeah. What's happened here? Um, like uh, anyway, so. Yeah, it's fancy dress essentially is a loose, but you know, not everyone does it. But anyway, so this particular one, they're all in uh, jockey outfits, and uh, the stat, uh, the main, the bachelor. I can't. This is hard work. I know, I'm like, sorry. We'll put some. No, no, it's fine. Yeah, put some. <laughs> the bachelor. Um, I can't remember, remember, lift is elevator. When you get to that part yeah, of the story. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> the, I. St I can't remember. They were heckling, and I was. It was kind of good nature, but then I started slamming them, and it was fine. Then the guy, I, you know, you can just feel them getting annoyed, and then. Um, 
the main bachelor he had like a f little one of those sticks of a horse's head on it like a like a fake hobby horse hobby horse there you go so anyway i started giving him I shit. Know you call that probably like no. Gouda loop. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we, in Britain. we call it a Muslim. Uh, a Muslim. We, call, <laughs> we call it a Muslim. Uh, anyway, so this guy starts riding a Muslim to the stage. No, he, um, <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> anyway, he rides this. He, he sort of like gave him some shit, and I could feel him like um, like getting annoyed. And then he, he came up to the stage, but like right into the middle. Like there was a little gap like this before the front row. He came up. But he like like rode it up, like pretended to ride it, but still angry, like rode it angrily up to me. And I like, was like, there. And then you know when you, you have that thing, you have that little bit of adrenaline, you go like, ha ha, you're trying to be funny with it. You're like, is this guy, is this guy gonna give me? And then I sort of had to explain that it was just banter and it was, cause he was just drunk. So he thought I was like, I don't know, just being mean. I was like, no, no, it's fun. And he was like still staring at me. And then the crowd, I can't remember how I diffused it, but it ended up being diffused. And then I could just see in his eyes, he was like, okay, cool, I'm cool with this. But what I really liked about it was at the end of it, uh, he then turned to the side and then just rode the horse back to his friends <laughs> afterwards. He just rode it back. He just car carried on in jockey character the whole way. That's really, I never even realized that, that you guys don't dress up like wankers for your, um, uh, sorry, <laughs> masturbators for your, um, for your <laughs> We're your Americans, we dress up like wankers every day. Every day, day. Every, every day yeah, is yeah. a wanker Affliction day. Affliction t-shirts, I love seeing, do you know what I love seeing is American guys in, a, in like, sleeveless basketball tops on a night out like and and i love you've got a backwards baseball cap on and that's wicked and i love it but i thought i was just in like movies i didn't know like when i was in the front row yesterday I was guy with a backwards hat i'm like this is just like this is just like the movies this is great this is, <laughs> this is what it. mommy told me america yeah, was yeah. about <laughs> this is why i moved it this yes. is great or whatever you call mommies and uh Britain. We call them mummies oh okay you call them mommies we call them mu you oh, put your a, mom. You, put, you put an o in the middle we use your mom. 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 mom mom mother mother do you say mother? You ever say mother? I say mom. Mom. I'm mid that's my Midwestern mom. mom. Like Who? I mispronounce my own name. I don't say Graham. I go Graham. Graham. Wait, how do you say your name? Graham is how it's pronounced. He'll I've, say it better than I can. Graham. Have I been saying it wrong all these years? Yeah, so have I. Don't worry about it. Oh, you got, yeah, you got, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry. I thought it was a soft H. No. Oh, sorry. No. Graham. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the dumb American. It's Graham. Or, it's Graham. Yeah. I, I'm I it's the way I and most people pronounce it is like the metric unit of Graham. Graham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys just can't right. be asked with most Graham. of the letters yeah. in the world. But it's pronounced Graham. I don't like hear a difference. Do you? You guys kind no, of go like Graham. Either. You just sort of say that Graham. Graham. And we'd say Graham. 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 We hit every every Graham. little letter we hit. We're we're front I've had a less we are front of the mouth we say every you guys are like back at banana, back of the mouth. Back of the can't mouth. be bothered to say the words. That wasn't bad. Was it? That was pretty good. It's like that an international good. incident's going to happen here in that a second. It was fantastic. There you go. There you go. There you Absolutely. Go. Well, see, that's a heckle. There you so go. this <laughs> is a great example. So <laughs> he was trying to oh, he's heckle. That's a good heckle. <laughs> I do. I love a good heckle. A good. This is the thing. I love a good heckle. Like you know, some people get annoyed when it's like some comedians. Maybe some like an old school thing. They go, "I want to get the big laugh. I don't care. There's a fun moment." Like, I remember I was uh, chatting to a couple in the front row, and I went, uh, "Where did you guys meet?" And they said, "This is like just when online dating started." And I went, uh, this is not in the northeast of the UK. So with the northeast, they've got like a weird accent like this. It's very playful and it's everyone up there is all known for being friendly, but giving each other like grief. They're called Geordies, but you guys, again, wouldn't understand what a Geordie says. fuck's a Geordie? I don't know what a Geordie is. Anyway, it's a taxi, it's a taxi driver. Does he dress on, like a horse it. racer? Yeah, yeah, what yeah. the fuck's going on? <laughs> Anyway, there was a cut. It was just uh, this was just so well. It was like they'd planned it. It was the timing was impeccable. It was a couple. I go, how did you guys meet? They went online. I went, oh really? Which website? I just had this voice at the back of the room shout out eBay. I was like, yes, mm. yes, that's, that's awesome. Like, that's, that's, awesome. that's all. Awesome, yeah, mate. That's I never when comics get like, uh oh, I'm always like, no fucking, that's that. I'll, I'll oh, absolutely. I'll let and then you can jump on and riff with that and it's great. Absolutely. What's a Jordy? So Jordy. <laughs> You know, like a you say, like a, a redneck is a term you'd say for a type of uh, part of the country. Is that you're not? That's, uh, no, there's someone here right now. Are you a redneck? No, he's pointing at the audience. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Backwards hat guy. You guys got a culture to... on. Yeah. yeah. Funny. But um, so Geordie would be like an area that's the northeast of the UK and uh, a place called Newcastle. So there's okay. a soccer so, team. So naturally, you called him Geordie. Mate, I don't, I don't make the names up. I just, <laughs> I just, rep I'm just a messenger. Don't shoot me. <laughs> Literally in America, don't shoot me. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that never has that phrase been more pertinent than, than in this country. But um, I was chatting to some guys yesterday in here. I do want to, sh I do want to shoot some guns. I feel like that's the thing in a gun range, obviously. Like, well, that's good. Yeah, you're not just like, no, oh, I want to go bug fuck nuts. I, 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 good, good luck in Phoenix. 
Yeah. Because <laughs> some guy said it was like 20, 20 bucks to go shoot some guns. Yeah. It's like, uh, you're in Arizona. It's guns. Yeah, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> Can I ask? I was going to say, well, Did actually, you, Halloween's this weekend. You might hear some tonight. Really? There's a vending machine that just sells guns <laughs> right out there. You can just... Do you know what it is? Like, obviously, as the Brit, we kind of see the news and we just go, this is, you go, you see what's happened to in Australia and the UK. Sure. Matt, you know, and my dad actually has a shot. He has a shotgun. He shoots pheasant. Could it be more British than that? He shoots pheasants um, and clay <laughs> pigeons. But he, so we have guns. I think it, everyone thinks, oh, because you, you, of these restrictions, you can't have guns. But yes, they, they has it in a cabinet and they check it every year mm -hmm. and it has to be used for the right things. But um, so, uh, you know, we still have guns, but it's just much more carefully controlled. But as a Brit, when I see the news and I see what horrible shit happens, you just go, well, just put those laws in and then it wouldn't happen. And I see that's my rational brain. But now I've got here, like I know that if I went to a gun range, I'd pick up a gun and be like, it's just, it, it feels like you just go, I bet, bet it feels cool to have a gun. I don't like to get political on this podcast. I am 100% for gun control, but stricter gun control but i had a 22 at eight like i i'm guns are fun you had a gun at the age of eight at age i had a 22 at eight so that's like uh, yeah that's the south or arizona i don't know right backwards hat I, <laughs> that's a gun at eight i don't want to get was i don't want to get political but i want to move to australia yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know we uh we used to just shoot clay pigeons also you know what clay pigeons are hmm? yeah. lefty uh, we lefty. <laughs> it's like a Geordie that's running up high. <laughs> <laughs> you got, you got, y'all know what clay pigeons are, right? All right, so we got into really into skeet shooting and clay pigeons. So yeah. we ordered a gross of clay pigeons through the mail. So we yeah. ordered like three thousand clay pigeons through the mail. <laughs> Eight hundred of them were intact by the time they oh, got yeah, so here. Funny, because <laughs> they're clay. Oh, <laughs> Everything nice. was just so It was a box of powder. Basically, <laughs> I actually shot the last time I shot a gun was at a range, a clay pigeon range here in Arizona with a buddy of mine like 10 mm -hmm. years ago, who's a cop. Really? Right. What I want to shoot, like the movies, I want to be in a, a field and I want to shoot some tin cans and some bottles off a, off a fence. That feels like the best way to do shoot. If I'm in a I show, the other day. just going two minutes, just two minutes in that uh, voice, that kind of sexy. Probably the best. Beverly Hills Cop film by a mile. I think you going to say if you no, could say anything else. No, no, the best second movie of a comedy. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Beverly Hills Cop Two is just as good as Beverly Hills Cop One. I hate to bring the comedy film nerds into <laughs> this to start a fight. No, no, it's a good thing though, because no, it's, it's a good point because we talk about this a lot actually on comedy film nerds. Comedy sequels are so hard to pull no, off. Absolutely, are. Hangover Two because they always try and do the same thing. Like Hangover Two is the right. same as Hangover One, but in Thailand. But Beverly right. Hills Cop Two is good because they bring in. Um, yeah, like Neil's, like they just like pimped yeah. out. Bit different, a, different bad guy. Nielsen. And it's great because it's a cop comedy. It made sense because you just, just none another crime. Just find a different crime, yeah. bring some different people in, and you'll have some comedy in and there. It, and it progressed. It went from Axel Foley and uh, 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 Taggart and those guys being against each other. To working together. To, to then they, oh, of course they became friends after they solved the crime. Let's take it from there. Yeah. But let's and not then, talk about Beverly Hills Cop 3 because that the only the only redeeming feature is Surge in that film for five minutes. Aquel, Aquel Foley. That's the only thing that's good about it. But the actual plot is that gun he has at the end. I didn't see three. I rarely see a three. I draw you, the line. You're not missing. You seen? Th you must have seen. Three. Same as if I. Yeah. I that gun is vaguely remember. The it. gun is. It's this. Uh, it's the Surge is like the best gun on the market, and it's got this like normal gun stuff and then it's got like a boom box attached. I mean it, it doesn't even look it's got a boom box attached it doesn't yeah. look like a these guys know what a real gun you should have a boom box on a gun maybe it, that would maybe that felt, would chill everyone out a bit yeah, it felt like one of those movies where they're just like hey let's get have a party and here's a bunch of money and we'll shoot something the script is 12 pages long just go out there and fuck around right. and we'll cut something it's together. 1988 we got a line in the budget for cocaine let's yeah do it. <laughs> exactly let's just go have a and good that's time what they did. that's exactly what but they did. Beverly Hills I'm with you me and my wife bonded out we both love Beverly. And a lethal weapon, I'd put two in them. It's not a comedy, but I put two up there with I one. I would put a comedy. I would say a lethal weapon was a comedy. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I th I think it's more. I think it's more of a serious thing with comedic moments. Yeah. Well, have you, there's a really good Shane Black podcast, and he talks about writing because he's funny as fuck. Shane Black. If you haven't taught, he's so funny. Like I listen to his podcast on the writers. Come on, what it was it's a. Uh, shouldn't talk about another network on this one, but it was like the nerdest <laughs> yeah, one. Right. Or other podcasts. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I, just, I had a guy at bar telling me about Tito's this. Or Tito's or Bud Light. Right. Yeah. Or Murray. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Let's not talk about, I'm a writer also. But this, um, <laughs> what was it? Uh, Shane Black was saying, he, when it comes to being funny, he, um, he needs there to be serious stuff in it. So 
What's he written? Okay, I've just seen time. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he said that he he can't write comedy with a blank page. He likes there to be serious shit in it. So when there's a, you know, it's obviously about suicide, lethal weapon. But there's loads of funny. There's loads of funny lines in it, and and, and two. It's like funny. I don't know. What's the plot of two? I don't remember. Two, two is uh, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of dodgy South, South, South African South accents. Africans, yeah, mate. It's got the who's it? My mate told me he's um, working on a. He's building a house for someone once, and they just watched Lethal Weapon two, and uh, they would just make each other laugh every hour by shouting from one side of the house to the other because they were the other side. They just shout diplomatic community, <laughs> <laughs> and you know the other guy was listening. He just went just got revoked. It's like oh mate, I love that bit at the end of that. That South African accent in that is dodgy as shit. It's so bad. Diplomatic community, like it's. Dip dip. It gets sillier the, the longer oh, the film goes on. Let's talk about racist characters in movies. Yes. <laughs> Please do. How about... Let's get Hank Azaria on. Let's like mention him earlier, yeah? Uh, what's his face from... Uh, uh, Dick Van Dyke? Short, Dick, Dick Van Dyke? Dick, Dick, Van Dyke. Dick Van Dyke and Mary Poppins. Pretty fucking racist, guys. What? <laughs> Fisher Stevens in Short Circuit. Oh, my God. Yes. Well, short. The Short Circuit movies are amazing. They are... They do so many things so insanely wrong that they're it. It's those movies are so bad they're fantastic to right. watch. Absolutely. They're fantastic to watch. And Fisher Stevens, I don't know what he was doing or what what country he was supposed to. His button is he doing a in India under under? Yeah, he's doing that one. It's, it's a Hindu. A Hindu, mate. Yeah, yeah a Hindu. Yeah, yeah. he's drinking out of a penis straw. It's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, it's great. <laughs> oh, I like the penis straw. No, here's the thing, though. <laughs> here's the thing. Ago, uh, ago. Here's the thing. He was obviously very, but then uh, uh, in the movie The Party, with the great uh, Peter Sellers, he did a English, but uh, uh, a Middle Eastern accent, but it was spot on and didn't. It, right when he could have got away with being as racist right. as he could have been, he did it spot on, and I don't think it was that racist. I think his Peter Sellers was just kind of brilliant. Oh, he's amazing. I don't know if anyone's ever said that about Fisher Stevens. No. <laughs> Has everyone just got Fisher Stevens was brilliant. Yeah. I'll kick this table over. In the Flamingo Kid, he was amazing. <laughs> when him and Matt Damon were trying to score those girls at the poker room at the club, it was amazing. I'm the only guy that remembers this movie is from 1984. Absolutely. But that's no, why that's what you're somebody about. listening is going to love this. Thing. Really? I do love an 80s movies are like, it's, it's very hard to find with not racist stuff. I mean, Tango yeah. in Cash, is that 80s or early 90s? I think that's that's 80s. 80s. Kurt is Russell that has just... Oh, it's 90s. Kurt Russell is almost oh, entirely... 80s. Everything he says is 80s. a little bit 80s. racist towards something. Was it? We got, we got We're going late 80s. It's the 80s? 80s or 90s. One of you has a computer, look it up. And I think it I'm, really I'm going to guess 80... Okay. 89, 88. But yeah, that Kurt Russell and that. Like, yeah? They're just ca it's just casual. It's just that casual. But it wouldn't even be seen as racist at the time, but... Anytime is an 89. 89. Must be. Must 89. Be 89. Yeah. My yeah. favorite racist character ever, Gilligan's Island. When uh, the Japanese uh, oh. military got, army guy, oh, Santos knows what I'm talking about, got lost at sea for, <laughs> what, 30 years, I guess would be about that, in his submarine. And it's a white guy squinting with buck teeth and, and Coke, Coke bottle glasses. Oh, God. That's not racist at all. No, not at all. It was right. a perfect depiction of the Japanese. Uh, well, then, then you got to go to breakfast at Tiffany's. That's oh, a fantastic absolutely, one. Absolutely. Another white guy going, oh, I'm John Gong Gong. Uh, what was it? What was his what face? About, um, Mickey that was Mickey Rooney. Ro 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 no, Rooney. Mickey Rooney. Yeah. Mickey Rooney. Mickey Rooney. Mickey not, Rooney. Mickey, not Mickey Rourke. And there's that famous Mickey Rourke's scene. racist character in Diner was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> what about Mickey Sh Rourke is just racist. Yeah. There's that. What about Sean Connery in um, that James Bond where he becomes Japanese by putting his hair in a bun and just making his eyes narrow? Yeah. And he only lived twice. Yeah, like, but he's yes. a spy, so it's fine. Like, it's yeah. like no, it's not. It's, he uh, only lived twice, I believe. Yeah, yeah. He dies. It gets thrown in the ocean at the beginning. I think that's my first boat. James Bond movie I ever saw. It's one of the good ones, actually. I mean, racism aside. Right. This is, this is a weird disclaimer to follow something. Most of the Connery ones are pretty good. Yeah. Good. Do you know I'm, what with James Bond though? Like my mate's like quite con as a Brit, you're supposed to love Bond, but like they are dog shit. I mean, let's like, it's it's the same movie twenty five. Do you know what I mean? Wait, like you're gonna roll I, in with I, pajamas I, and talk shit about James Bond right now? <laughs> Is that what's gonna happen? No, no, do you know what? No, 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 it's not pajamas. Let's be, let's the be guy nice. fights crime in a tuxedo, and let's you're rolling be, in and he's pajamas. not pajamas. He's bottom half pajamas, top half smart. He's he's right. dressed for every occasion. Oh, oh it's like, like the mullet of outfits. The mullet of outfits. Yeah, business on the front, party in the back. Okay, got it. Yeah. Sure, <laughs> anytime. <laughs> but the James Bond knows in like I still like, but like the last one. What was the last one? It was like two and a half hours. It was uh, Spect. Was it called Spectre? Spectre? Yeah. Fuck, Spectre that was one. long and shit. Like, isn't all? It was like the biggest budget, and you go. 
Because people love the familiarity, but there's a thing on a train and it's just like bad, he wasn't even good. I felt that too after Spectre. I was like, I don't wear, how much this franchise, how long can we keep? It's cool. I mean, I like Roger Craig, but I was just like, okay. Roger Craig? <laughs> what was he? Is you, that you, Roger you, Craig? It's a mix-up. There a mix, the yeah, he's Roger bottoms? Craig. Roger Craig, the football player. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You, da- mean, you mean Daniel Craig, Daniel not Roger Craig. Moore. Yeah, half Roger Craig and half yeah. Craig. Yeah, half Roger Moore, Craig T. Nelson. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 uh, visual joke. Very funny. Bond in Nobody the front, coach the in the bottom. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, It's Craig T. Nelson's TV show, Yeah, I know, coach. I was I don't know what you're talking about, but right. I found it funny. He played Patrick and uh, SpongeBob, the other uh, guy. Oh, the blonde haired guy. Nieder, not Niedermeyer. The blonde haired guy. Help oh, me out, Lazenby. Uh, what? Uh, Lazenby? Lazenby? He's yes. not George Lazenby. He's George Lazenby, the Bond guy. One yes. Bond wonder. I'm the only guy who's a fan of George Lazenby's work. Her Majesty's Secret Service is a good Bond. Yeah, oh, I feel like he basically one. got a rough ride because he cried at the end of that film and then no one wanted to see Bond do that. And I feel like that's why. It's great. It was Bond finally found true love and then she's murdered. So yeah. Spoiler oh, alert. All, oh. Yeah, spoiler alert. Dude, it breaks my... We have all the time in the world. All the time in the world. And then he just guns, gets gunned down. But Craig, oh. Daniel Craig's cried at the end of... Uh, what's the one before Spectre? Uh, Skyfall. Oh, no, is it Skyfall? The one where... Um, Again, spoiler alert. I think it is Judy, Skyfall. Judy Dench died. The one that's Home Alone mixed with um, <laughs> mixed with Bond. Isn't that the best? You're just like, you're like, this is all right. And like, cool, they're booby trapping the house. It's like, I was fully on board with that. I was like, just want the wet bandits to come in right now. And this is great. All of a sudden, Joe Pesci's tripping on marbles. But incidentally, yeah, that, I, uh, the Home Alone movies, again, that is, there's no, they are great films, those. There's no, Home Alone 2, talking of, if you're going to go on comedy, two's up there with one. I can't adjust to this switch. That we went from Bond to Home Alone being great. I really, I just couldn't do it. I can't it. adjust I just, to the I just switch froze. that we went from the Road Stories podcast to comedy film. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're like that guy. We're like that guy. We've got two things going on at once. Mix up. Like David Guetta's come in and just oh. mixed it up. Seriously, guys, hot shot first. All right. Can I tell you a quick, can I tell you a quick, uh, what's his name, Craig? Daniel Craig. No, Craig T. Nelson. Okay. No, Daniel Craig story. My wife, for Please. those of you in the who don't know, is a costume designer. And she worked on. I don't know if I should be telling this. Please. You no, I guess I can tell it. You can if you if you find out afterwards. You can't. Cut all right. It well, out, I, I, I'll this just, is live streaming. That is oh. true. You know what? It's just a, nah. My, my wife uh, is not a costume designer. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I'll tell you. Oh, thank Good you. story. Good never mind. We're moving on. So speaking of the road. <laughs> this is. Every, when when it, when it, when we stop recording, we can then. Yeah, tell I'll, the tell, room. I'll tell. I'll we'll tell you all the, the story right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, what was that? Uh, hey, welcome. Come in. Have Hello. a seat. Hello, oh, guys. please. Come on in. We're going to do another hour and a half. Oh, it's wow. Great. No, we are. It's fine. Come, come up with more. <laughs> oh, Jesus. These boring people dressed with one type come up of with style. More 007 stories. No one's doubled up. No one's gone casual in business. Everyone's just like uniform and uh, outfits right mm-hmm. now. Yeah. This guy's dressed correctly. He's gone. He's going. Although, there was a exactly. time when. That sh- is correct for There this was weather. a time when shorts and uh, button ups and long sleeves were not acceptable. Not nowadays, mate. No, no, I wear that all the time. That's my outfit right there. This is lovely. Except for tonight. <laughs> this, where did we lose this? I'm actually, wait, wait, basically when you gave us on, a really mo- exciting teaser to a great story and I we had to carry me. on and just talk about bloody movies again. Come I know, on. I just, I know. You want to talk about Daniel Craig? I Breaking know. news. Oh, forget it. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, watch this tie-in. I was on the road with Jimmy Schubert. Nice. Yes, and we went to the movies to kill time to see uh what was that who was the mo- <laughs> who was uh who's the what were the movie that had juno in it but it wasn't juno wow Li- uh, uh, and the director did uh that movie my wife worked on in you Canada. sound like such a dad right now you're just just that thing where you're just stringing bits of information I together i know this what is it inception inception so we went to see Inception. That's a funny That's description of Inception. I know that film's confusing. <laughs> that was almost an Inception confusing like, description. Well, the You're girl like, from Juno that wasn't in Juno. Juno. And some guy leaked DiCaprio something. I don't know. He did something. but then right. That's your go-to rather than this, the film with nine different levels of dreaming in it. I was like, <laughs> well, here's the deal. We, went, we ate at the buffet at the casino for lunch. And then we went to go see Inception. And uh, we both got food poisoning. Ooh. And I, uh, I don't like to talk like this, but uh, as soon as Juno walked on the screen, I had to poop like right, right now. Not because of her. Yeah, absolutely because of her. Really? <laughs> oh yeah. That's she, that's she has that react. I, she has. That she causes on me. food poisoning. She, yeah, causes, she causes food. Poisoning. Ellen Page causes food poisoning. Guys, <laughs> well, you heard it here first. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was Juno. Uh, 
That's funny. She's on screen. I'll be reaching for the tissues, but not, not in a good way, in quite a horrible way. So I split and had to go, and I never saw the rest of Inception. So I never saw it. So I go to the club that night, and I'm middling in Schubert's headlining, and I go to the club manager. I'm like, oh, dude, I think I got food poisoning. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do a half hour. He goes, you think I give a shit about you? Look at Schubert. And Schubert was passed out on the back row, just about just like throwing up in like a fucking basket oh. on the thing. Oh my the God. same club where you got into the fight and I got into the fight. Wow. Wow. It all comes around. So never, nice. never, never, never do this club. I think it's closed down. <laughs> <laughs> you'll you'll close either close shit down. yourself or get punched. <laughs> I think that's close. Is that club closed down now? Uh, Up in Reno? The Reno club? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. All right, because of food poisoning and fights. Any questions before we wrap up from the audience? No. Great. Um, <laughs> What story? Hey, well, when we finish, you'll hear the story. Oh, that's When story? we're off air. Yeah, I'll tell you that story later. I, I'm going to hear that story. All right. I don't remember what I was talking about. That's all right. Uh, I want to thank uh, Skyle Mile High Show, Mr. Matt Santos over there. Where can we see your pictures? Um, oh, okay. He's doing pictures for All Things Comedy this He's weekend. He's been shooting so the whole out. weekend. It's yeah, absolutely. Great. Absolutely. Great. It was great. I want to thank you guys for coming in and hanging out and chilling with us. Thanks, guys. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this is the Road Stories podcast. You can catch us on All Things Comedy. Um, iTunes, all, all the all the uh, pod catches. Uh, Graham Elwood is Comedy Film Nerds. Where can we catch you? And uh, you can see Comedy Film Nerds. Go to ComedyFilmNerds.com. We're also on All Things Comedy. All my tour dates and everything at GrahamElwood.com. My movie Earbuds, Murray's Hands are in it. Um, and, it's true. And that's on iTunes and Amazon. And also my other documentary, Afghanistan, about me doing performing in Afghanistan is available on Amazon. So go to GrahamElwood.com. You can get all that. Awesome. That was the best plugging i've ever heard in my life i'm that a was fucking succinct. plug machine um, he's been on every podcast all weekend yeah <laughs> you got that down um my i'm called chris martin which is really annoying um <laughs> so if you put chris martin comedian i would say comedian into google but there's like a an old american open micer called chris martin okay um but yeah just put it chris martin comedy.co.uk but you guys don't understand. <laughs> you, Americans go, there's, I can't not put com at the end. You guys don't even sh no, think there's I another. I put chrismartin.hindu. Dot hindu. <laughs> dot, callback. dot dick on. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Graham got it. I like it. Um, okay. I do a podcast called Carl and Chris Podcast on allthingscomedy.com, which is good fun as well. Okay. Well, you're a sky full of stars. Thanks, man. Right. Thanks, buddy. You're a sky full of stars. That's, that's a Coldplay a... song. Oh, really? That's I, was, I, I didn't even know. Sorry, I thought that was the most like, lovely thing anyone's ever said that to me in their like, life. That was beautiful. It's like <laughs> somebody's grandmother would say we, that. He was talking about shitting himself two minutes ago, and then he's like bloody a poet I was five like, seconds later. Chris Martin, you're a sky full of stars, you are. <laughs> have some have some pound cake before you go. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Because uh, the the only one I've heard is yellow, so that would be weird if you just gone, Chris, you're yellow. And I'd be like, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's inaccurate. Hepatitis, buddy. Hepatitis, yeah. All right. Jaundice, technically. You know, Fox will get that <laughs> joke. They're big. Uh, Fox News is big Coldplay fans. Really? Did you hear about that? No. They fucking shit all over Radiohead, calling Radiohead a, uh, a poor man's uh, Coldplay. <laughs> Just to show how in touch they are with uh, that's so reality. Fantastic. That's the worst thing Fox News have ever done. As well. <laughs> Screw those guys. You guys, thank you so much. All Things Comedy uh, at the All Things Comedy Comedy Festival. Uh, do I have to read this? Yeah. Okay. That, <laughs> just the bottom part. That was such a great out. That and was now great. I have to read it. Uh, please bring Bud Light on stage. Sure. All that's right. What it is. Oh, hold on. We'll just uh, go with my Alexander Murray scotch instead. Uh, we're recording live at the All Things Comedy Pop-Up Podcast Studio. By the way, this is such a great idea. Yeah. I, people have walked in to come in. We've got a, a, a picture window here. People have walked in, come in, and just enjoyed the shows. I've come in and so on. We're recording. What is, this what is going on? It shouldn't be that complicated. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. We literally need here we go. Bud Light. We'll pass that. Thanks, Thank man. you. Thank you. Oh, it's a Phoenix-style Bud Light. Oh, oh it's a Cardinal. That. A Phoenix Cardinal. Go Cards. Is that right? Oh, well, just get it like right. that. I'm not a sports guy. Uh, we're recording live at the All Things Comedy Pop-Up Studio, which is awesome. I can't wait to do this again next year. We're, at the Fe we're in Phoenix at the All Things Comedy Festival. We're presented by Bud Light, Cityscape, and, and Tito's Handmade Vodka. Tito's Handmade Vodka. I'm going to be in Atlanta next week. I don't know if you guys are from Atlanta. I'm working the punchline. The hotel I'm staying in only serves Tito's. Well, uh, as alcohol. <laughs> like no. what you can't have a beer no it only serves Tito's alright that's weird alright well I didn't <laughs> alright
So don't be a Geordie and drink Tito's. Yeah, drink Tito's. Ah. There we go. All right, I was supposed to read that at the top. Just so you know, it's gluten free. So if you're <laughs> if you're looking to stay in shape, guys, this is the booze for you, right? <laughs> it is gluten free. That's what they put on the back. We were all gluten free before they told us gluten. Uh, special thanks to Stand Up Live, the Tempe Improv, and Chico Malo, where we had a fantastic lunch today. Oh my God, dude. so great! That was beautiful. Oh, it was awesome. I got to tell you, and uh, one of us here runs a festival, so I don't want to. Uh, this is a great festival. It's a great festival. This is it's, the first year, and it's fantastic. It's it's, it's amazing. I was saying, I was telling Al Madrigal, I was like, so no, name dropper. Uh, uh, so the Los Angeles, I'm a co-producer of the Los Angeles Podcast Festival. We just did our sixth one. Name dropper. And I was like, <laughs> six. I'm name dropping the number yeah. six. My buddy Sting hates when people name drop. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's my favorite joke. MurrayValeriano.com. <laughs> um, no, and I was just saying, like, knowing what's involved in running a festival, seeing how smooth this is and how awesome it is, it's, it's really, it's, I've been having a blast. Mm. Do you know what's almost as smooth as? Tito's vodka. Oh, <laughs> so the delicious. The smoothest vodka on earth, guys. You guys, uh, at Murray V on Twitter, Murray V Comedy. <laughs> uh, Atlanta, I'll be at the Punchline next weekend with Josh Wolf, our buddy Josh Wolf. Ooh, and I'll be at Laughing Skull also off and on for the next couple of months. I'm going back and forth from Atlanta. And then I'm hitting the road heavy in February. Um, so, guys, thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Nice, uh, I'll tell you the story. Uh, maybe a little scotch if you'd like. And uh, Chris Martin. Thanks, what guys. What a fantastic... Thanks, uh, Cheers, buddy. Fun times. Fun times. What a, what a very funny comic. I love meeting new comics. And, of course, Graham, good friend of mine. We're going to surf Ooh. when we get home. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right, you guys, thanks for listening. Thanks Aaron so on the producing. Thank you so much. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Santos. Thank you for the scotch. Thanks for driving. Kill this so you can hear the story. <laughs> <laughs>